What's up, guys? So in lieu of a podcast episode, unfortunately, our schedules got a little bit jumbled around and John was kind enough to put an extra gameplay video together for you guys today. So we're going to release this instead of the podcast episode that we have yet to record. But I do hope you guys enjoy. And John, thank you so much, my man. Looking forward to this. How's it going, everyone? I'm Country Private Channel at Resolves, and we play a different deck list on every video that we put out. And today you're getting one of my favorites that I take on the standard rank ladder. It is control deck, it is Mardu, it is Reconstruct History. Uh, I love this deck list. It's got a ton of stuff in the toolbox. You only get one game. We did win, we only took it out for one, but the match was like over 20 minutes long. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Somebody got emote happy and they had to get put in their place. Just don't hit the emotes, guys. Just don't hit the emotes. That's all I'm asking. But here, let's hop into this deck list and get to it. All right, guys. So here's the deck. It's really resilient. I'm going to cover Reconstruct History real fast because it's the namesake of the deck and it's how everything works in here. And then we're just going to go through the cards. We'll do a deeper dive at the end of the video after the gameplay so I can give you guys some interchangeable ideas on this and exactly why I like this stuff. Because if I do it right now, the intro to this deck list is going to be like 12 minutes long and I don't want that. The game itself is already 20 minutes long and the person started getting really annoying with the emotes. But I'm glad I could showcase the uh, video for them on on our channel because you look like an idiot all you got to do is good game at the end of a game you don't have to be that idiot but they were butt hurt because they didn't know how to handle this deck and i can completely understand they couldn't get our life total down quick enough so let's go ahead and hop into this because you guys are going to see how much life gain we've got going on in this and the recursion if you put it together if you don't put it together in the uh this part of the deck list like i said we'll cover it more in depth at the end but we got four reconstruct histories we got our spot removals and the three banishing verses, the three Belfal masteries, the two lore hold commands, the march of otherworldly light, and the march of wretched sorrow. And of course, lore hold command can create a body. It can make our creatures indestructible, give them haste. However, we don't run creatures. And of course, we can sacrifice a permanent and then draw two cards, which is amazing in this deck list because reconstruct history will recur an enchantment, an artifact, a sorcery, an instant, and a planeswalker from your graveyard. So you can put one of each of those into your hand by utilizing the Reconstruct History. However, Reconstruct History exiles. So you've only got four uses of this. And watch out for Test of Talents because that just kills this deck. But if you got a Bank Buster that you clocked all three counters off and say your pilot got killed and this thing's just dead on the ground, you can sacrifice it to Lore Hold Command to draw two cards. And then if you get a Reconstruct History, you just get your Bank Buster and you bring it back out and you start drawing three more cards. We have Thrilling Discovery to help us uh, gain some life as well. And you discard two cards, you draw three cards. We're not worried about what we're discarding. Just be aware of what your opponent's playing. So you've got your spot removal and your board sweepers in place to take care of the board state. But anything you ditch from this deck, except for Valky, Reconstruct History can get back. And Valky, we only utilize as Tibble. So we're not too worried about that, but just don't use it as Valky. It's easy to remove. Uh, we don't need to be looking at their hand. All we're worried about is the board state and we can control it really well with this deck list. We have Celestis, remember to turn the lights on and off. You don't always have to draw a card and discard a card. You can just keep that life gain going if you don't have anything else to uh, do and you got three mana open that you can put into it. Just keep your life total going. Uh, Cosmos Elixir could get really out of hand with this deck list because you're gaining that two life. So if Obnixilis is on your opponent's side and they're hitting you for two life, you're gaining two life back. If they've got two Obnixilis, you may have done something wrong because you've got a lot of spot removal to get rid of Obnixilis. Everything here works except for March of Otherworldly Light and Vanishing Burst. So you got Bellful Master, you got Lower Hole Command, you got March of Rest of Sorrows. Plus, you've got Burn Down the House. Use this as a sweeper if you have to. You can absolutely use this as a sweeper. Loth hates this card. Obnixilis hates this card. Sorens hate this card. Kaido's, when he phases back in, hates this card. Emperors hate this card. All Planeswalkers hate Burn Down the House. This card's amazing. Our board sweeper choice is Doom Scar, though, because we can foretell it and have it up for turn three. So if we're against any uh, any uh, heavy aggro decks, we can wipe out the board state pretty fast. Meat Hook Massacre is just late game play board sweeper. Plus, we can get that life gain, life drain going off of the Meat Hook Massacre, which still may make it the most valuable board sweeper in the game. But Burn Down the House is really amazing in this with all the Planeswalkers running around right now, too. Um, I would even be a little enticed into possibly dropping this to three and bringing this up to three. There's, burn Down the House is just that good. It's just that good with the, with the game state right now with all the Planeswalkers running around. We have Tybalt. 
because I'm not using it for Valky ever. If you use it for Valky, that's on you. I only use it for Tybalt, for the exiles and being able to cast from the top of our opponent's library or exile in an artifact or a creature. But I'm usually trying to get him to aid as quickly as possible so we can exile all graveyards and have all those cards to cast. Tybalt's amazing. We have Loth because we can drop two 2-1 two, menace for each spiders. It gets out of control and she gives us card draw. Even if she is losing us a life, more often than not, we've got life gain going on somewhere in this deck. We've got Kaya that can help us uh, exile a target non-land permanent. Make sure you hit your opponent's Meat Hook Massacres. You do not want to have a Meat Hook Massacre versus Meat Hook Massacre War. Always keep them on tilt. Keep their Meat Hook Massacres off the battlefield. You can exile it with Kaya. You can exile it with Vanishing Burst. We have Professor Onyx where we can plus one because we're always wanting to plus her up to get her to her negative eight. And of course, if we're casting an instant or sorcery speed, which is a whole lot of our package, she's hitting our opponents for two and she's gaining us two life. She's amazing. And then everything else has some utilization in it if you want to go through all their counters. But that's the main things I use them for. Plus, we've got Creature Lands and Den of the Bugbear, Hive of the Eye Tyrant, and Crawling Barons. You could probably find a way to get into Field of Ruins in here just to kind of help you stabilize if you need to go find a color uh, to get it on the field to help you cast something. But I like the uh, lands where they're at. And more often than not, we don't need the Field of Ruins because we got March of Otherworldly Light and we can recur it and we could just be getting rid of lands for one white. Plus, we can do life drain off of them as well with March of Russia's Sorrows. We can shoot them with Lower Hold Command. Um, and plus, we got Vanishing Burst. So. We have plenty of stuff to take care of creature lands. If you put a field of ruins in here, that's on you. It's your choice, but it's your deck list now too. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck list. It was a lot of fun. I love this deck list. It's something different from meta that you could take on the rank ladder and still have a lot of fun and be competitive with. It's super resilient. You guys are going to see how crazy it gets in this video. And if you guys stick around to the end, we'll deep dive into the deck list and I'll give you guys some other options that you could drop into this and kind of explain a little more of the interactions of what's going on. But you're probably going to see a really good showing in the this video of what this deck list can do so i hope you guys enjoy it and i hope to see you guys at the end but if i don't you guys have a great weekend peace all right we go first man this isn't the ideal opener but we've got a sweeper and we got thrilling discovery to get into other stuff so yeah we'll keep we prefer our sweeper in our opening hand to be doom scar This route for now well actually we'll go with this because i mean we can get them back if we got the reconstruct history so i'm not too worried about ditching them problem is is if we don't hit the reconstruct history but we do so screw it <laughs> right on never didn't have it now we've also got bellful mastery so definitely a plus I have no idea what kind of mono black they're playing. Um, again, let's go ahead. We can ditch these two. Draw. Then we'll have Reckoner Bank Buster as well. That gives us a lot of land. But uh, we're going to get a lot of value out of Reconstruct History. We are going to have to figure out a way to clean, to clean up this board state faster than we expected. You deal with this hmm. Well, that definitely helps us clean it up. So let's go ahead and get this going. While they don't have anything um, on, I would prefer to exile that because I'm guessing they're running blood on the snow, but hey, it's going to be what it's going to be. Since it's a flyer, we're going to go ahead and swing in for four and see if they want to uh, block. So we can be kind of aggressive with this deck, especially when we get a lure hold off that quick. But we still need to be ready to get reconstruct. I would like to get Hive of the Eye Tyrant down this next turn. But depending on what they play, um, we may have to reconstruct history and then 
But since they didn't, I would still like to reconstruct history and have the option of having Belfal up. We have plenty, plenty of red on the board. We'll definitely take that back. Um, I think we'll do Lorehold Command again because we have the option of sacking a land and drawing two cards. We'll definitely take back a Thrilling Discovery and we'll get our Kaya. I know we said we were going to probably use it as our Belfal, which in this case we probably should have put down Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Since we didn't, we're going to keep Reckoner open for the draw. Uh, we are going to have to discard two cards, though. So I think... Man, I'd kind of rather it be lands. But I don't want to get rid of the hive necessarily. I think we are going to get rid of the hive, though. Oh, okay. So it is just one card. So we're fine. We're fine. I miscount. I counted to eight and automatically thought two. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I'm bad at math, guys. The name is Country Fried for a reason. Yeah, we'll pass this up. Yep. Not even worried about this. Not yet. Still not worried about this. So, burn down the house is the answer here. We're just going to wipe the board and wipe the planeswalker. And then we'll have draw off of uh, Reckoner. I was hoping for some removal, but I'm pretty sure they're going to fire up a Blood on the Snow just to get one of their uh, Planeswalkers back. So, yeah, let's just take it out. I was thinking about creating the Devils and going in on the attack with the Reckoner. And wanted to get the Hive out anyway so we could start exiling their Planeswalkers from the graveyard. So, yeah, they're going to Deadly Dispute. They're definitely looking for blood on the snow if they don't have it already. Um, but we definitely want Hive up so we can start getting rid of their uh, graveyard. Now they've got Field of Ruins, so Hive's going to be trashed here soon anyways. Um, I put Kai out, but I'm still guessing Blood on the Snow for Planeswalker. So I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop one of these. Do we? We could fire up Hive and make them get rid of it. Nah, we're gonna go ahead. We can get rid of this and this thrilling discovery. I hate getting rid of it, but I really want the little old command. And definitely want to burn down the house, the Kaya. And the other Meat Hook Massacre just to clean up. Oh, yeah. This is looking good. Um, we'll pass. Yep, I'm waiting for them to pop their field of root. See which one it's going to be on. I would guess Hive. But I think they're waiting for me to sink mana. Which is fine. I will. Sure. 
Sure. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to do uh, the crawling barons here, but at the same time, uh, let's hold off because I want to be able to uh, Utilize that on the token. So let's go ahead and do this for two. Let's see what they're setting up for. I imagine they're going to get rid of the eye twitch now, which saves us from getting pinged by the meat hook. But it also leaves our uh, hive of the eye tyrant to go in and remove one of the sorns. And we can do the record or bank buster now. Okay, they didn't use the eye twitch. Strange, but okay. Okay. So, let's use Kaya to get rid of their meat hook. I just want to get, in, get out and finish the job. Um, they're going to be annoying and start emoting now, which is fine. They can't do anything. Uh, we pretty much got control of this, so they can emote away. What we're gonna do is attack in here, let them get their eye twitch. They can go get mascot and then we'll lore hold command our token and make them think we found the doom scar and then they should probably concede. Which if we can force them into a concede, that's fine. We still could have fired up eye twitch and went and got one of their sorns, but they're still got uh, field of runes over there as well. They're going with that. They're going with environmental. Okay. Fine. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with this. Uh, we'll do three damage that and then we'll sacrifice a permanent. So three damage and sacrifice permanent. And this is an enchantment, a planeswalker, and a creature. Auto pay. That's fine. So what we'll do here is we'll crew up the bank buster. Oh, well, we didn't even crew up the bank buster, so we'll still use it as fodder. We couldn't crew it up because they were both tapped, so that's my bad, too. However, we're in a really good spot. All right. So let's go ahead and make them uh, use their field of room. Nice. Predictable. Um, we'll go ahead and go here. And here. And foretell. Now we'll let them have it. Uh, we'll get another land out. We'll have plenty of land for casting whatever we want. Uh, let's go ahead and go there. They are not happy. <laughs> they are not happy. 
Not happy. I got emotes too. We probably could have thrown in Discovery with our lands. Definitely want to play Sanctum out. We'll see what they got. I mean, throw your blood on the snow so you can uh, get one of your things going. That's fine. We got so much life, I'm not even worried about it. We'll still have a lot of life. Sure. You know what kills Loth really well? Uh, Only used one of our reconstructs. good spot we got burned down the house which takes out every planeswalker they've got I'd love to see him use blood out of the snow on an empty board <laughs> predictable so predictable Make sure that I only hit it for one. Uh, cancel that. Man, they're really mad. snow. Oh, I twitch. Right on. Sure. Yeah. Play it all out. You only got so much. I can keep doing this all day long. I can do this all day long. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. My turn. We're going to see the concede. We're going to see the sad face. Is this going to be sad face? I think it's going to be sad face.
Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. <laughs> oh man. They got probably blood on the snow. Planeswalker. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh man. Absolutely. You could have such a good one. burn down the house <laughs> that's what their third blood on the snow <laughs> for an empty board <laughs> okay they hit kaya with one that's fine that's fine that's fine um poor guy i mean you saw me pick it up you can see my hand you can literally see my hand can literally see my hand. Good game. <laughs> All right, everybody, there was a gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So, yeah, you can see how well Reconstruct History can utilize the graveyard to be recurring everything back into your hand. You can get your Me Hook Massacres back. You can recur your Rec Reckoner Bank Busters when they're out of counters and start popping them off again to draw cards. Lorehold Command's absolutely amazing. Belfa Mastery helps you exile Planeswalkers so your blood on the snows can't get them back. Uh, Vanishing Verse can do the same thing, but Belfa Masteries can hit Kaidos and Obnixilis and stuff like that. Uh, probably as well as Tamiyo, although I don't see too many people play Tamiyo, but it can definitely hit a Kaya and a Tybalt. Um, but yeah, with that, we've got Life Gain off of Thrilling Discovery. We got Life Gain off Celestis, Cosmos Elixir, Lorehold Command, Wretched Sorrows, Professor Onyx. We got all kinds of Life Gain going on in this, and it gets really crazy. And you guys saw Burn Down the House MVP'd out that game. I mean, we were taking care of their planeswalkers left and right. You can see how frustrated they were getting with their emotes. It was just making me laugh. I mean, they just get annoying as hell, and people are going to be idiots like that sometimes. But, you know, let them do what they're going to do, and then they can show their asses, and we can put them on video on our channel. And, hey, now you're famous. So, there you go. <laughs> All right. Not really famous. We're not even 10,000. But they were annoying as hell. So, love them. Love them. I love the salty players. But anyways, with that, um, I would say you could probably take out a Walth and put in a second Professor Onyx if you wanted to in here. You could do Infernal Grass, but I don't like losing any life in this. I only like gaining life. So any kind of spot removal other than what we've got going on, I don't think it's necessary. Um, you could look at some of the other commands going on. Um, I want to say, what is it, Silver Quill Command? Maybe one that you could put in here. I haven't really tried it. Um, I'm trying to think. You could probably put an Emperor in here in place of uh, Tybalt, but I really like Tybalt. And another card that's getting overlooked that should still be remembered that it's out there is Fracture. Fracture can hit an artifact, an enchantment, or a planeswalker, and it only costs one white and one black. I still think Vanishing Verse is the better spot removal by a mile. It's not even a question. It's not even an argument. I'm not even having it. However, Fracture is kind of situational, and it doesn't really care what the colors are. 
So it may be a good one of or two of in this deck list. I don't know how you would jam it in here, though. I mean, maybe if you took out one Belfal Mastery and put in one Fracture, then you have that option. But I don't think it's even necessary because Vanishing Burst hits most of the things that uh, Fracture can't hit. And Belfal Mastery can hit the Planeswalkers that the Vanishing Burst can't hit. So I don't know that you need Fracture, but Fracture is still an option out there. Again, I think possibly think about maybe dropping doom scar down one and going with the third burn down the house but i really like having that little extra percentage of a chance of drawing into a doom scar to help us get it foretold and have it on turn three against the aggro heavy decks which the meta and the ladder have a lot of aggro so doom scar is really the best board sweeper out there for what our options are and it really works well in this deck list especially with the recurring and again, like I said, when you're on the ladder, the only thing you got to worry about is counters. And with counters, you're not really worried if this gets countered and put in the graveyard because a reconstruct history can get a reconstruct history if it's countered that way. And if you ditch a reconstruct history to th thrilling discovery, another reconstruct history can grab that reconstruct history. The only thing is, is if you got a reconstruct history in the graveyard, make sure you get it back with that reconstruct history. Do not pass it up for another sorcery unless you absolutely have to wipe the board with like a burn down the house or a doom scar. And that's your only option in the graveyard besides reconstruct history. Then yeah, pass it up, but you definitely got to try and get that reconstruct history back with the reconstruct history. If you discard it to thrilling discovery or if it gets countered to the graveyard um, with all that guys, I would say I really like it where it's at. I don't know that I'd make too many changes. Like I said, maybe pull us up Professor Onyx one, maybe plus up uh, Burn Down the House one, maybe put in a couple Field of Ruins. But uh, how you do that is going to be on you and up to you because the deck list is yours now. But it, like I said, it's something different than the meta, and you can take it on the ladder and still be viable. It's a very resilient deck. It's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of interactions, and you definitely have to be mindful of what's going on. But watch out for Test of Talents and watch out for Farewells because they can really ruin your day. And definitely make sure you take care of the graveyard trespassers and the hive of the eye tyrants or they're really going to screw up your plans you cannot let people be touching your graveyard and if they can then you're going to have to be able to adapt to it more often than not it's just really hard once they start disrupting your graveyard it, it really gets hard to adapt to what your opponent's doing but if they don't play any type of graveyard disruption you're absolutely going to slaughter them so no graveyard disruption no counters have a lot of fun because you're probably going to wreck shop but there is mardu history lessons i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys had a great time i really like putting this deck out for you guys so with that i'm country fried for channel it resolves guys stay safe be happy and healthy peace until next time